Hi everyone, my name is Lior Katz and I'm a bankruptcy attorney and I'm here to discuss different concepts about bankruptcy that can help someone out who is exploring whether they want to file a bankruptcy or not. So let's start with what is a bankruptcy. A bankruptcy is a type of legal process that allows someone to either wipe out debt or reorganize the debt in a way where you can make payments and cure the debt over some time. When trying to file a bankruptcy, there's a couple of considerations you should make. The first one is you need to determine how large is your debt. If you have a very small debt, and it's very small will be considered under $5,000 or so, it may not be worth it to file a bankruptcy because the cost of the bankruptcy and the effect on your credit may be greater than what it's worth. After you made a determination that bankruptcy is right for you, we need to determine whether you would qualify for a bankruptcy. Obviously, you can pick up the phone and call an attorney to determine if you qualify, but usually you don't want to have a lot of assets in order to qualify for a bankruptcy. So if you have a house with a couple million dollars in equity in it, you may not qualify for a bankruptcy. The same goes if you have a very expensive car that's paid off. So you need to be conscious as to what you actually have as your assets before you can determine if bankruptcy is right for you. Uh, there is a risk that if you have very large assets with a lot of equity in them, once you file the bankruptcy, you may lose those assets. And again, that would depend on what type of bankruptcy you file. But it's something to keep in mind. The other thing to keep in mind is your income. If you have a very high income, that may not qualify you for a bankruptcy. So you need to determine that as well. Now that we talked about what it would take to get qualified for a bankruptcy, let's talk about what would happen once you file the bankruptcy. So assuming you get qualified for a bankruptcy and you proceed with filing it, any sort of collection efforts will have to stop by any of your creditors. So they're not going to call you anymore. They're not going to send letters tr trying to collect from you. Everything completely stops and that's a process called the automatic stay. The next thing that will happen is the court will let all of your creditors know that you had filed a bankruptcy. So all of your creditors can include individuals and businesses you owe money to, but it can also include different creditors that you don't owe money to. Like if you're not behind on your credit card statement, or if you're not behind on your rent, the landlord and the credit card company may still find out about the bankruptcy because they'll get a notice of it. So once they find out about the bankruptcy, again, they have to seize all collection efforts against you. The next part of the process is determining how long it would take for the bankruptcy once you file it. So once you file the bankruptcy, for a Chapter 7 bankruptcy, it normally takes about four months, four and a half months. For a Chapter 13 bankruptcy, it can drag for as long as three to five years. Lastly, let's talk about what happens when the bankruptcy is over. So when the bankruptcy is over, you will get what's called a discharge order. And the discharge order is essentially the court giving a stamp of approval that all of your debts are wiped out and you can now get a fresh start. Once you get the discharge order, your case is pretty much over and all of the creditors who you owed money to will be notified of that discharge and they won't be able to collect on that same amount that they attempted to collect against you when the bankruptcy was filed. So if you have any more questions, give us a call at 310-444-9444 or visit our page at www.bankruptcyfirm.net. Thanks for listening and please click the subscribe now button. Thank you.